Now let's take a look at a fishing case study by Gillian York, a writer and activist focused on the intersection of technology and policy. Based in Berlin, she serves as the Director for International Freedom of Expression at the Electronic Frontier Foundation. Let's take a listen. My name is Gillian York. I'm the Director for International Freedom of Expression at the Electronic Frontier Foundation, and I'm also a digital security trainer. I started using uh, privacy enhancing or security tools a few years before I started working with EFF to communicate with some of my friends in other countries who were already early adopters um, of you know, th those kinds of tools and felt safer using them. So I started using OTR first. Uh, later, when I started at EFF, I learned how to use PGP. And then as this next generation of tools has, has come out, um, I, I use mostly secure messaging apps like Signal, um, even WhatsApp, which now offers end-to-end uh, -end encryption as well. Um, and a lot of my friends use it. And I would say that I'm still, I'm still learning. A couple of years ago, I was on vacation in Sarajevo and a phone call woke me up. Um, this phone call, someone was telling me to check my email that there was an important file that they needed me to open um, and that they were a journalist and wanted to talk to me about something. So I sleepily opened my email um, and there was a message in my Gmail, my personal account, um, that had an attachment and came from an address that looked like Reuters, the news agency, uh, but was spelled incorrectly. So I was suspicious. Uh, I wasn't on the phone anymore. I kind of went back to sleep and then I was awakened again by, by the same person calling uh, and this time more insistent about me opening this attachment. I told him, look, I, you know, I know better than that. I'm not going to open a random attachment from a stranger. You're going to have to do better. Um, but he kept calling throughout the day. It was from a British number um, and sent at least two emails that had the attachment. Later that afternoon, I got notifications uh, from my Facebook and my Gmail um, of attempted sign-ins from other, from other places um, and had to go through some security measures to make sure that you know, somebody wasn't uh, trying to access my account, well, which they were. Um, that was all. It was a one-day event, but I got a total of, um, I think, something like 30 or 40 calls from this number. Um, but for me, this was something really obvious because I knew uh, what to expect from, uh, from somebody who was trying to scam me or fish me. The first thing I did after receiving the email was to not open the attachments. Um, that was really important. Uh, you can look and see you know, the email address. Is it someone you know who's sending you this? Even if it is, I would still be wary. And you can call and check in with them um, as to whether or not they actually were trying to send you something to open. Um, the next thing that I did was I, I made sure that two-factor authentication was on on all of my accounts, and it was, which is part of the reason that uh, the, the person was not successful in gaining access to my Facebook or other accounts. Um, after that, I changed my passwords. When someone tries to break into your account, it's usually a good idea to change your passwords after. Um, and I use a password manager to keep my passwords more secure, uh, longer, um, more random, and that's a, that's a good way of, you know, those are, those are a few good ways of making sure that your accounts stay safe.